Alrighty, welcome back to another episode of your Pittsburgh Penguins franchise mode. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than the last one because there is no more Twitch template. Finally, just YouTube exclusive. So I'm very excited for this. The editing should be a bit better. I'm looking to improve with every video. Without any further ado, let's hop right into it, shall we? All right, so looking at the lines real quickly here, as you can see, Drake Batherson, Cody Glass, and Pavel Buchnevich are still our first line at a plus five. Jake Gensel's looking pretty solid there on the second line with Nolan Patrick and Sam Reinhardt, also at a plus five. Basically, the lines are the same as last episode. Uh, Sidney Crosby's still looking pretty good. He is starting to drop now. Hopefully, we can win that that precious Stanley Cup before he retires. Looking at the defense, we've got Geet, Yoki Haru, Slavin, and Carlson as well as Almari and Latang on that third unit at a plus three. So our defense is looking pretty solid, plus three on all the lines. Goaltending, Alnafelt and Price. Price is a little older, but you know what? Only one year left. That contract's off our books next year, so we can spend a good chunk of that change on someone else. Looking at the power play, we've got a plus five on the first unit, plus on the second unit. Pretty standard for what we've had so far in this series. Uh, looking at the four-man power play, plus one on each. Looking pretty solid. Penalty kill, plus three and a zero. Hopefully that first line's out there more often than the second, so that plus two will come in handy. Plus zeros on both uh, three-man PKs is usually pretty solid as well. Looking at the AHL squad, uh, you got Angelo Elliott on the first line with Philip Hollander and Svechkovsky. Then you got Ludwig Johnson as well as Riopel and Okotiuk. I can't pronounce that. On the uh, defense there, hopefully we get some good growth here out of Ludwig Johnson. This guy, we want some growth out of this guy. He's looking pretty solid, but... I want more. I want more from him. I want him to replace Latang in the future or maybe even replace Carlson. So we'll see what happens with him. And uh, we'll hop right into the season simulation here. We're going to sim all the way up to the trade deadline uh, to see if there's any moves that we should make and uh, what we can do to improve our team. So now, jumping here at the trade deadline, we have uh, we have a look at our team. We're 36-22-1. We're doing pretty solid. Uh, I think we're about first in our division. Um, doing pretty well for ourselves. I mean, the Atlantic Division is looking pretty strong, but yeah, first in our division, doing pretty strong. Cody Glass already at 73 points in 59 games. That's very, very solid. He's above a point per game. That's more you can ask for, right? I believe this is he's on pace for his best point contri contribution of all time, like like at least personal career, right? In terms of his own career, I think he's on pace for his best yet. So good for him. Some pretty all pretty good all-around scoring for our team. I think we're going to be one of the top teams in the league in terms of points. Uh, Yoki Haru is doing pretty well. Nolan Patrick. Neil Geet, a uh, defensive defenseman with 30 points. Damn. Damn, he can do it all, this guy. Hey, Neil. Gotta love Neil Geet. Uh, Chris Letang there on the third unit with 28 points. We're doing pretty solid. Pretty solid output from our team. Our third line is definitely something we can improve on. Almari is doing quite strong as well. Uh, looking at the goalies here. Oh, oh no, oh no, that can't be happening. All in the field at an 889, oh god. All right, well maybe we'll, we'll look around the league here. Maybe some, uh, some of the other goalies are doing worse than our, no. Okay, Vasilevsky and Demko are killing it. So maybe I'll look at uh, Vancouver after, see what their defense looks like. Uh, forwards around the league, as usual, Kucherov, Dreisaitl, uh, Cole Caulfield. I almost said Caulfield. Uh, Nick Suzuki, all of them are killing it. Ryan O'Reilly up there, that's pretty impressive. Same with Marcia, so a little surprising to me. But Cody Glass is holding his own as well among the league's best. So look at Vancouver's defense here, I want to know. Okay, Quinn Hughes. What are their overalls, though? Okay. Okay, I don't <laughs> I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Maybe I'll look at the change of the coaches. Here, let's, let's look at Tampa Bay. What's their defense like? 92. Okay. I mean... <laughs> Is it much better than ours? I don't think so. Uh, let's look around the league first. I'll look at the uh, the points, at least the team stats. So look at the league. I think we are, oof, damn, 10th in, no, yeah, 10th in the league. Not great. Goals for per game, we're third. That's pretty solid. So that must mean our goals against is pretty bad. Yeah, we're, we're about middle, maybe bottom of the pack in terms of uh, goals for per game. Power play percentage, we're about middle of the road. Not too shabby. You really can't complain too much. Around 23%, I believe. Ah, 24. Or 25. Uh, it's not too bad. Penalty kill, the worst. <laughs> the worst penalty kill in the league. That might explain our goals against average, eh? Let's see what we can't fix here. Let's see if we can't fix any of this stuff. Maybe I'll look to... Yeah, let's, let's move on here to the coaching staff. Mickelson. This is a nice uh, associate coach here. I'm going to offer him a contract. 
a good generalist coach, A plus everywhere. Can't really go wrong. We're also gonna look to hire a new goalie coach because clearly, clearly loophole ain't working out here. So we're gonna hire Ben Swores as an NHL goalie coach. So he wants to be an AHL head coach, but as long as you offer someone who wants an AHL coaching position, a position in the NHL, they'll usually say yes, especially the trade deadline. You know, I think they just want a job, they just want to get paid. So we're gonna fire, uh, we're gonna probably fire Bolu here because I want to keep the defenseman coach. Yeah, there you go, the defensive coach. And we're gonna fire Lupul here. He's he's clearly not doing his job right, or something's going wrong because it ain't working. Now let's see if these two coaches accept, shall we? All right, Tucker Mills. Tucker Milkison, oh my gosh, English, said yes to our contract. So there we go. We got a nice A plus HL, I mean NHL associate coach. All right, now looking at uh, the next guy here. Let's see. Ben Swore says yes. So there you go. We just uh, upgraded our coaching staff quite significantly here. You can't really complain about that. Uh, all right, we're going to be a buyer here in the trade deadline. Enter the trade deadline. There we go. Let's see what's available here in the deadline. So available is Ely Tolvanen. Damn, Ryan Pulock, Darnell Nurse, some big players here. I'm going to jump cut quickly to uh, the trades that I'm going to make. I hope you guys are are looking forward to it. There's a lot of options here, and we'll we'll see what I can pull off. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, so looking at this first trade here in Buffalo, we're going to offer up our starting goalie, Alnafelt, in exchange for their starting goalie, who they don't want for some reason, 88 overall goalie. Can't really go wrong with that. They also want to give up this high starter this high starter potential goalie, he's only 18, 61 overall. I'll give up Ruszynski for it. I think Downey can turn out to be a pretty good stud here. Damn, they say no. Okay. Let's see if we can't sweeten the pot just a little bit. Get them to say yes. Maybe I'll throw in a third round pick here. And they say yes. Beautiful. Let's move on to the next trade. All right, we got Philip Dano, Victor Hadfield, who's basically just a cap dump. In exchange for Samuel Poulain. Beautiful. And Tilla, the other goalie prospect that we have. I'm sure we can draft another one. And Angelo Elliott, another good forward prospect that we have. Going to give him up because we just, I don't see him making the team. I think I can sign someone better than him. So let's see if they say yes here in New York. I think they will. Let's see. Beautiful. Another trade done here with the New York Islanders. I'm going to quickly get rid of Victor Hadfield before I forget. I tend to forget things like this. I, I'll trade for a, a guy who's just like a an extra player to tack on for a roster spot, and I always forget to trade them away. So here we go. Victor Hadfield being traded to the Edmonton Oilers for a sixth and a seventh round pick. There you go. Not too bad. Not too shabby. I do say so myself. Next up here in Winnipeg, we're going to be offering up Almari, our third pairing defenseman, playing with Latang. Uh, he's got that plus through Latang, but I want to try to get a plus five here. So Michael Kepney is a defensive defenseman. He's also better. Let's see if they say yes. And they do. Beautiful. We got a nice big trade here. That's probably going to do it for this trade deadline. Yep. And then we're going to hop into the edit lines menu. We're going to edit the lines real quick here. See what we can't fix. Uh, some big trades being made here. Carter Verhage and Heppo Niemi moving on. Two firsts for, uh, I believe that's uh, Luke Kunin. So some pretty big trades happening around the league. And uh, without any further ado, let's hop in the edit lines. And uh, I'll jump cut to the final, final product. All right, so here we're looking at the, the final product. We've got plus fives on the first two lines, basically the same as before, but this time we've got Phil Dino on the third line and Sean Monahan on the fourth line with Teddy Bluger on the wing. Uh, we got rid of Samuel Poulain. Just needed to make that upgrade. I think it's going to benefit our team quite significantly here. And now we're going to move on to the defense. Obviously, Phil Dino, I'm considering him part of the defense because he got five-star defense. Pretty heroic there, not going to lie. Pretty nice. Uh, looking at the defense, Neil Geet. Henry Yoki Haru plus three, Slavin Carlson plus three, same as before. You know, if it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I could go for that plus five, but I mean it was working before. They're all at a plus twenty plus, so we'll see uh, plus minus. We'll see what happens, uh, and then a plus five on that third line. So two plus threes and a plus five can't really go wrong on the defense, right? Uh, so now let's move on to the goaltending. I mean, obviously it's the same as before, but uh, I mean we have carry prices before, but the difference is we have Uko Pekalukinen, a much much better starting goalie than what we had before. Obviously, all in the felt was okay, 84 overall, but this four overall difference here should make a huge impact for our team. Um, hopefully. I'm not a huge believer in goalie overalls in this game, but we'll see what happens. Obviously, the power plays, basically the same as before. Penalty kill, same as before, except Dino was in for for our boy uh, Samuel Poulain. So it should upgrade our penalty kill just a little bit. We were worse in the league, so let's see if we can't fix that, right? 
So now jumping to the end of the season, or we're going to hop into the uh, simulation here, but I'm probably going to skip to the end of the season. That way you don't have to watch the boring, the boring simulation that is EA Sports here, NHL 21. Let's see what we finish compared to the rest of the league. So looking at our division, we are first in the league with a hundred, uh, first in our division with 104 points. Oh my God, we'd be fifth in the Atlantic. Okay, looks like we're going to be playing against a team who's better than us in the first round. Would have been better to finish second in our division, but I mean, not much you can do about that, sadly. So it looks like we're yeah, yeah. Geez, we're going to be against the new Detroit Red Wings here in the first round of the playoffs. A team that has more points than us. The Jets won the league, and then the other Pacific divisions also weak. So our division, as well as the Pacific, seem pretty weak. The Atlantic is just full of world beaters, destroying teams, man. Like, this is, this is not even fair at this point. But regardless of that, we'll look at the, the team stats here. Cody Glass with a 96-point season, his best career I guess his career best season, you know, 96 points, a plus 61. You can't ask for better than that. Drake Batherson, Pavel Buchnevich also put up significantly good numbers. Um, Jake Gensel, not a point per game. Same with Sam Reinhardt, but you know what? They did their part. Second line did pretty well. John Carlson really slowed down to end off the season, but 60-point season out of a 35-year-old defenseman, can't really complain, right? Uh, Phil Deno, uh, plus two. That's all you really want from him. You just You don't really care. Too much about the points. You just want him to be a plus. That's what his go that's what his job's there for. Keep the puck out of the net, right? Uh, Neil Geet did quite well. Thirty eight points. Can't complain. And a plus thirty eight on top of that. So pretty pretty good season so far. Looking at the stats, I mean, uh, Michael Kepney only played four uh, twenty one games in the NHL with four points or two points and a plus four. Can't really complain. He did his job. He kept the puck out of the net. And oh my God, Uko Pekka Lukanen, twelve five and one. Finally, finally a goalie with an above 900 and a 928. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Carey Price, I don't even know what to say to you, my guy. That was a terrible season for you. Although, I think he finished with an 891. He was at an 880 or something like that before. So, Cat could play too much. He improved. At least he improved. So, I won't get too mad at him. I mean, it's not even like a, a league-wide problem. Like, I'm seeing some good goalie stats here. Like even Olnefeld, dude, he had a 9-10 in Buffalo. What the hell, man? Where was this? You were on such a stacked Pittsburgh Penguins team, and you couldn't even put up a 900. And now here you are in Buffalo, losing every game, putting up a 9-10. Get out of town, bro. Come on. Okay, cool coffee with a plus. I mean, 61 goals. That's kind of incredible, not going to lie. Marsh, so back in Tampa. Interesting. Putting up some good numbers there. Playing with uh, Nikita Kucherov. like to see it. Cody Glass. Holding his own against the rest of the league's best. Uh, looking at rookie skaters, nothing that impressive. Wait, actually, bro, this man had 25 goals. How do you put up 25 goals and only have four assists? This dude literally only shoots. What the hell? What the hell? No real goalies that stand out to me. Obviously, some a lot of numbers, like games played, but their stats kind of suck, not going to lie. All right, looking at the team stats here. First in our division, but that's not going to mean much. Uh, in the league, we finished sixth. So sixth in the league. <laughs> sixth in the league, fifth in the East. That's insane. That's insane. Bro, the Eastern Conference is stacked in this league. What the hell? All right, we finished third. That makes sense. 3.77 goals for per game. We slowed down a little bit. We, we, we reduced that a little bit, but I think our goals, yeah, look at that. Look at that goals against, baby. That's so much better. We're in the top 10 in the league right now. Uh, power play percentage, Buffalo. does. I don't want to talk about a Buffalo. 10%. That's disgusting. Uh, we did okay. I think it dropped off a little bit, but our penalty killing significantly improved. That's almost a 5% increase within only 20 games. That's a pretty solid improvement there. Still last in the league, but improvement is improvement, and I'll take it in any way, shape, or form. So now let's look at the lines down in Detroit to end off the episode. So Detroit... Okay, Spencer Finley is a pretty well-rounded player. That's kind of scary, not going to lie. They got a really good top six here in Detroit. Uh, you got Dylan Larkin, Verana, Finley, Verhage, Raymond, Zadina, Saad, Valeno, Bergfist. Damn, they got a depth. They got some good depth on offense. Their defense is a little bit weaker than ours, not going to lie. I think we've got a much stronger defense than they do. You know, you got William Wallander there with more Sider, Dennis Shalowski, and Emil Vero. Their, their main guy is Ed, Edvinson, obviously. Um, and their goalie is pretty strong too, about equal with ours. 
So I think our main advantage here is going to be our defense. Let's see if we can keep the puck out of the net and uh, and beat them at their own game. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I made a bit of a different call today. I made it a bit of a shorter episode, only about 16 minutes or just over 16 minutes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of new format. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below. I'm always open to any uh, criticism or any suggestions that you might have on how I can improve my editing style, improve my video style, and make it a, that much more entertaining for you guys. But without any further ado, I want to say a huge thank you to all, to all of you for all the support I've been getting, all the comments I've been getting on my videos. And uh, as always, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button if you really enjoyed it. Tell all your friends if you want. Keep me to yourself if you want. It's up to you. I don't mind either way. I'm just here for the fun of it. And I'll see you in the next one. Tune in live on Twitch, some lazy guy 09. And I'll see you again soon, alright? Peace.